Alright, I'm doing the weird cereal video. I need a cut shot, I need a cut shot. I have an idea. Katie, you wanna help me make a video? Will you hold this for a second? Yeah. The fuck are you doing with my cereal? Alright, so we're here in the Titan Test Kitchen. I gotta do my fucking dishes, Jesus Christ. It is a Sour Patch Kids Cereals. It smells like tricks. It tastes like tricks, that'd be pretty cool. That is odd. That is odd. Okay. Dude, what is that? Ooh, that's a big old fucking chunk of sour right there. No, thank you. Alright. Mmm. I just even pour. Spoon. It's not horrible looking. I mean, it kind of looks like tricks, if I'm being honest. You can see it. I thought it would make like little poppy sounds or something like Rice Krispies, but it doesn't. Alright, first taste. Here we go. It's quite unpleasant. It's quite... Oh. Oh. Oh, it just won't... Your sour won't go away. When does sweet happen? Mmm. -mm. Nah. Not with milk. Alright. Ugh. Katie! Come here! Put this in your mouth. Yeah, it's oh. not pleasant, right? It's oh. not pleasant. That's it's not. It's not good. It's not good. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's not pleasant. Um, what do you give it on a scale of one to five? A negative five. Smell it though. That's the weird part. It smells like tricks. It smells really good. Try one dry too. They're not horrible dry. It might be a dry eat cereal. No, uh, uh, I never want to eat that again. <laughs> okay, final verdict. She never wants to eat it again. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to eat it, but in the same way that I want to keep smelling something that smells bad. Like when your buddy farts and you just have to keep smelling it all up for some reason. I don't know why. Like, So, I'll give it a 2 out of 5 based purely on... I, I don't know why. Because I can't quit looking at it. It's like stunning to me. Alright, so cereal number two. Twinkies, bitch. Twinkies. The fuck you know about Twinkie cereal? This one's going to be so much better. I don't I need a... Somebody, I need an adult! I should have did dishes before I did this, huh? All right, watch this. Okay, so we're going to take a second. So much better. All right. So next, Twinkies. Oh, this is exciting. They have a honey bun also. I'm kind of curious to try, but we just try the Twinkies today. Ah, it smells delicious. But they're like oddly soft.
with a crush. I thought it was gonna like be squishy. They smell just like it's gonna be the sweetest thing I've ever tasted. Yeah. Twinkies flavored cereal. Let's see that. Looks good. Took a big bite. My bad. Um. Mm. It's not great. I mean, it tastes a little bit like pinky cream. Yes, I have a theory that the milk is going to taste better than the cereal. Try one more. I was doing donut and honey bun. That honey bun looks good. Um. Huh. They're not great. Neither one of these cereals are that great. This one's definitely better than the Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids was disturbing. So the way to describe it was unfortunately taste. Yeah, see the milk's already starting to taste bomb. So this is gonna make at least the milk taste really, really good. But so we'll go with a two and Go to 2.5 because it's not that much better. Like it's tolerable, but it's still not good. So basically, both of them just plug them. All right. I am Timothy Titan. We are sitting here with the Center State. Oh, God damn it. I always point the wrong direction, dude. You think I'd get it down by this episode? David Marvel. You really think so. <laughs> now, excuse me while I show you how to do an opener. Okay, Hello well, to all my Senators and winners out there. It is the Center Saint live here, three inches deep, with your host, Timothy Titan. Oh, there you go. <laughs> See, uh, I actually right. know Marvell. He's a, um, a ring announcer. He does some managing. He takes a bump uh, here I'm more and there. of a manager. Yeah, I'm, well, I say more of a manager, but I've seen you do a little bit of everything. I refer to that as the I hustle if you haven't seen the show before. He has the hustle. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so when you have a uh, lot of irons in the fire. Well, last time I was called a hustler, I got chased down the street, and somebody was throwing Playboys at me. It was weird. Uh, <laughs> was he in a wheelchair? Yeah, no. Dude named Larry. <laughs> you, wait. You know Larry? Larry, uh, yeah. Larry Flair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. From Michigan, yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to – talk about something that is literally breaking as this goes so I'm, I'm something else just popped up on my phone wwe who everybody thought was untouchable the untouchable wwe if you will it seems is no longer untouchable i can touch it yeah covid19 got a hold of these other efforts oh and my gosh. i'm gonna read you the release list as of now it is the 15th at 4 o'clock, and this is the list of released wrestlers today only. Drake Maverick, Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, Carl Whoa, they, they got Zack? They got Zack? Zack no. and Kurt. Oh. Yeah. Wait, just wait, dude. Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows. Keith I saw Slater, that. Eric Young, Eric Rowan, <laughs> Sarah Logan, No Way Jose, Mike and Maria Canellis, EC3, Leo Rush, Primo, Epico, and Kurt Angle. And they also released Aiden English. Well, from the first off, let's, first off, let's, Kurt Angle's a Hall of Famer. 
he can go anywhere and be like, hey, I'll yeah. put my face on it. And so I'm not worried about Kurt Angle. It's everybody else, you know. Yeah, it, he's kind of a shock for – I thought they'd keep him. They were – another one's – hold on. Because I know that Lance Storm was on this list also. So Lance Storm got released from backstage. He, um, he just got there, dude. Yeah, Fit Finley was one of the people that got released from backstage. The whole backstage is listed in here. But so, I mean, everybody is starting to feel the effects of this. Pressure. Yeah, Pressure. Even, even the biggest uh, dogs are falling. Mm-hmm, yeah. Even the biggest dog on the porch, if you will. So, I mean, yeah. out of them people, who are you most shocked by, Marbell? Um, people released Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, because they they were part of the main event of night one. And they, they were did, a big part of that. They did just do a breakup, didn't they? Didn't they just break up? Not that I saw, because, again, the last, I, uh-huh. the last thing I really saw WWE do was WrestleMania. As far as I knew, I heard nothing about them breaking up. I think they um, broke up since WrestleMania. I think they were doing, like, a they were breaking up angle. No, because I thought they were behind it. Like, they were both back in AJ. They were AJ's muscle because Taker was, you know, Taker. Yeah. Well, AJ, I don't think AJ's been back since Mania, though. That's what I think. I think no, that he hasn't. And yeah, I think so that's the, why they I think cut the storyline for them two has been they broke up during since Mania because they weren't able to protect AJ or something. I'm not going to lie. I've, I've only read. I have not watched since Mania either. That's a um, weird thing. Unfortunately. One of my favorite nights used to be the Raw after Mania. I didn't even watch the Raw after Mania this year. Me neither. I didn't even bother to look up clips or whatever because I knew it was just, okay, it's probably going to be Seth Rollins or there was nothing that's going to go make you go, oh, my God. There wasn't going to be that fuck you Roman moment. Yes. Yeah. like Yes, that's, absolutely. Like, I, I mean, I would say that the biggest surprise to me got to be Sarah Logan. Yeah. That seems – like, yeah. I can think of – I hate to be this guy, but I can think of people that could have went besides her. Absolutely. Um, especially with you – you hear it left and right, guys who feel like they're going to be better off somewhere else. They're, they're like, begging, let us go, let us go. And then all these other guys who are like, no, we want to Well, they did release the revival stay. earlier in the week. Right, and that was okay because they were like, we want to go. Yeah, but guys like – Keith Slater, who everybody is on the internet is going, or Timurnet, yeah, is Timurnet, now going to go. cry. Is now going to cry because there's like, there's no way 3MB is going to become the greatest faction of all time <laughs> because he can't become a champion now. My favorite thing that said on, I saw somebody that posted and said Heath Slater is going to be world champion in three years. You watch, he's going to pull Drew if McIntyre. He about, <laughs> if he grows about four feet. And just gets like, but he's got to yeah. he's got to kill the accent because it's been proven Vince doesn't like the southern. Accent. Yeah, Which, being being a West Virginia boy, uh, he Heath Slater always had my interest because it's like, okay, that's my guy, the one man band. I like it. Let's do it. And See, I, like, I'm I lived in West Virginia for a couple of years. Like I, I lived there for like three or four years, and still, even after living there, whenever I do like a dumb person. I do a southern accent for some reason. I don't know why. Like, I can't help it. Like, if I'm saying something dumb, I'm saying it in a southern accent, if that makes sense. Like, I just can't I help just, it. It's, it's, it's not even – it's like a it – was, it's been beaten into me by society. Yeah. Now, with, with me, I feel it's just easier to call everybody stupid than trying to be an example of stupid because anybody who hasn't seen me perform, I have Alice Cooper eyeliner on and lipstick sometimes. And I gotta want. I am not going to go, look at someone and go, "You look special." No, because I know what I look like. Oh, I know what I look. But like I'm trying to make though. you. My, the whole thing is, I think it looks cool, so you can all screw yourselves. <laughs> that so when people are like, "You, you're wearing eyeliner," yeah, and it looks better than your mother's. <laughs> but come backstage, I'll show you. T- no, I wouldn't yeah. do that because I'm a happily, happily engaged man. Uh, you must watch a lot of uh, makeup tutorials on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, no. you have a YouTube channel. Why don't you take this opportunity to plug that? Hold up. Let me get the plugs. <laughs> oh, gosh. He electrocuted himself again. I knew that was you on the camera last time. Ha <laughs> uh, No. Yeah, my plug is The Sinner Saint David Marbell on YouTube. 
where I upload some movie reviews, wrestling reviews, and also and some neat recipes. tricks. Yeah, yes, so. that was what I was going to point out was a neat little trick I discovered and little things like that. I was and the way I do my process, um, pull back the curtain here a little bit, <laughs> is I record a bunch of stuff in bulk, set them to air at certain times, so I'm not overwhelmed because I have kids and a and a family. How many kids do you so have? I didn't very, ask you that yet. I have two. Okay, I have two okay. kids. Um, I have an eight year old who is like the most hyper person you've ever met times two. Okay. Um, and I have a six month as of this month, six month old baby girl uh, whose favorite thing in the world is for me to take her, pick her up and be like uppies and lift her. Above yeah. My head. Yeah. Just wasting all your energy. But, but the funny thing is, is the whole time I'm doing that, I'm not thinking, don't drop her because I know I'm not going to. You know, I yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, kid, do not throw up on me right now. Because <laughs> it's a proven fact you cannot look up without your mouth opening. So I got her like this, you know. I had, to, I had to test it. I had to test it. I don't know if that was a dumb test or what, but I failed. I want to go back to YouTube real quick because I want to say that um, I was impressed with your thumbnails. You, you seem to Ooh, be um, quite the thumbnail creator, like, much more creative than me. I usually just take a shot of the uh, the video. You seem more like more like a uh, a thumbnail that I would see on the main page. What's your process behind that? Like, um, Let me just mention right now, if you ever need help with thumbnails, give me an idea of what you're doing, and I'll see what I can make up for you, bud. Absolutely. You know, that that's... That's one thing I've always felt like is the most important thing is to help people out, especially yeah. if I can find a way to help people out. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll give you a hand. Okay, it's because I know the thumbnail is important. Like, what do you what what goes into your creative process on that? Like, what do you put? Okay, so my whole thing is currently I don't have a laptop. I don't. Okay. I have a computer, but it's sitting on the ground over there, unplugged, unused for the past three or four years because I've adapted to using my cell phones and casting to TVs and whatnot. So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of went to the wayside. Well, I want to, I've tried to, I've tried doing YouTube a few different times, but it's always had to be on my phone. I, I, at one point I had some janky cameras like that were like literally the camera that was installed in the computer. Okay. Um, I think, I think there there are video files of my older videos on there that if if I can ever get that computer working again, I will upload the old stuff onto the newest channel. Okay. Um, but I've tried a few times, and uh, I've had channels shut down a few times because I broke rules I didn't realize I did. Uh, <laughs> okay. You know, and so it was like all that work because, again, I'm working off cell phones. I don't have a giant – a bolt of all my work. So it's yeah, like you don't have like a, a backlog, if you will. All right. Um. Just doing a quick video here. We cut the interview here. I'm going to do a second part in episode three. So make sure to go to episode three and watch for the second part of the David Marbell interview. Thank you for watching.